Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Anyone familiar with the nuts and bolts of AI scripting knows that the AI plays by following basically a long list of step-by-step -step rules, where given a specific game condition, it'll respond with a scripted action. While most of these rules are consistent across civilizations, there are civilization-specific rules added to help civs perform a bit better and use their strengths and bonuses, whether that be when to research certain texts or which units to prioritize. Because of those differences and the fact the AI is inherently better equipped to utilize some bonuses over others, it stands to reason there must be some civs it's better or worse at playing. That leads to the question then of what are those civilizations? Of course, there's a few possible ways to go about trying to figure out what those are. You could play against the extreme AI 42 times perhaps, and decide which felt the hardest and easiest. Or maybe more objectively, you could have a tournament where AIs eliminate each other to compete for the top spot. The problem is, if you ran that tournament several times, you'd probably get very different results. Even better, what you could do is have all the civilizations play each other, ideally more than once. Even three times would be pretty good, meaning Aztecs play three games against Bengalis, three games against Berbers, three games against Bohemians, and so on with every Civ combination, and then track all of their performances. Unfortunately, that would require 2,583 games, which would all have to be set up manually and would take over a thousand hours of real time, even if the games were played on fast speed. Who in their right mind would undertake such a project? Well, not me. But someone has done it and is sharing the results. If this sounds familiar, the same anonymous hero had a similar project a year and a half ago that I talked about at the time. Back then, archer civilizations dominated as the AI would go for skirmishers and archers, basically every game 1v1. So, civs with bonuses for that, or surprisingly if the civ had battle elephants, they tended to do well, which led to Vietnamese being the unexpectedly best AI civ at the time. Since then, the AI has actually gone through a lot of updates and improvements though, as well as having new civilizations added, and is much better at full castle age play on just one or two town centers. It's also now able to drush with militia, make men at arms, and has a scout rush. Cavalry civs in particular are also much more likely to make knights now, and altogether it's enough that the results are in fact very different this time around. Admittedly, this might only give a rough idea of how well the AI plays each civilization, as beating other AI isn't necessarily a perfect indication of how hard it is for a human player to face. But even beyond just wins and losses, the tests are recorded for every game the advanced times and other statistics, so we can get a reasonably good idea of even why the AI is doing as well as it is, so, let's check it out. We'll start with the AI's worst civilization, which is the Burmese, at just a 30% win rate one-on-one -on -one against other AI. Now, Burmese aren't a stellar civilization online with a human at the wheel, but certainly not in 30% win rate territory, which is pretty abysmal. The AI typically makes archers and skirmishers with them in feudal, leading to castle age crossbows and elite skirmishers, followed up with a rambi or eventually champions. All of that sounds pretty reasonable, but the fact the AI doesn't really micro a rambi means it often falls behind after some bad engagements in Castle Age. If you're going for the easiest match against the AI possible for an achievement, Burmese would be a good choice, or at least the other extreme AI seem to be pretty good at beating up on it. Rounding out the other civilizations with under a 40% win rate, we have Saracens, Portuguese, Celts, Gurjars, Ethiopians, Italians, Cumans, and Dravidians. The person who put this together gave a few notes they observed about each AI's typical behavior, and Saracens for example tend to open archers and skirmishers, but underutilize their market bonus compared to how a human player would, which is a pattern displayed by many of the civilizations mentioned here. Many of these lowest performing civilizations are also surprisingly archer civs, which is interesting given archer civs previously had been the strongest cohort over a year ago. The reason for that is the AI used to just go for mirror archers and skirmishers basically every game, so civs with archer bonuses end up winning the slugfest. In contrast, now it seems the newer strategies it employs, especially in Castle Age, are much more effective. The AI also had a strange habit of giving archer upgrades top priority, meaning civilizations not making archers were then putting themselves behind, which is no longer the case. That said, I'm a little surprised to see Celts here at the bottom, as the AI will often dress with them, which is a new and one would think effective strategy given the AI's ability to micro. Then again, at times it's easy to wonder if the AI can properly execute a successful militia raid consistently, or if it just leads to throwing away units more often than not. Another pattern with the low performing civilizations is the AI seems more often to wait and see what its opponent's unit choice is going to be, and then focuses on counters, rather than preemptively making cavalry or siege. At least that's the impression given to me by the person who ran and watched at least part of thousands of games. 
Now, Gurdjars are a really interesting case here as well, as they're a top tier sieve online, but the AI really struggles to make the most of them. They do garrison their sheep and mills as a matter of fact, and the reputation at least is that's a strong bonus in its own right. That said, the AI sometimes has difficulty keeping a steady Dark Age food income, maybe thanks to bad scouting, which can then lead to some idle town center time, potentially putting it a few villagers back. The AI likes to play Grajars with archers and skirmishers, followed up with any of elephant archers, Shravampshire riders, chalkum throwers, or camels in castle age. So it's not that the AI isn't making use of its options, it seems to be more a matter of not being able to micro its units well, and capitalize on Grajars' strengths like a human player can. Now, of course, most civilizations fall between a 40% to 60% win rate, and if I wanted to make this a one-hour video, I'd love to go through all of them and their respective strategies, but I think it's really the extremes that are the most interesting if we're trying to keep things to a reasonable length. With that said, there's seven civilizations I want to look at that had over a 60% win rate, meaning these are theoretically the civs the AI is strongest when playing. The first is the Byzantines. They also go for archers and skirmishers often, with spearmen if they see cavalry units, but of course they have a discount, so there's some extra synergy that other civilizations don't have. In Castle Age, they typically go with crossbows and elite skirmishers, though on some maps they like to fast castle, putting down an early defensive castle and defend with pikemen and camels. In Imperial, which they tend to hit a little faster than average, they go for cataphracts, supported by cheap trash units. Interestingly, the AI seems to prefer countering infantry with Arbalester over the cataphract, though it does love its elite cataphracts and endless trash units, which makes for a strong combination against other AI civilizations. The next top performer is the Huns. They're a little unexpected for me here at the top, as the AI tends to use houses to wall now, which is something Huns aren't able to do. As Huns, the AI will sometimes try to drush, but again often open with archers or skirmishers. Whether it's because of resources saved for houses or not, Huns typically attack a bit earlier than other civilizations, and on average reach castle age about 30 seconds faster. One subtle advantage they have is that many civilizations can temporarily house themselves by trying to add to their house wall, but giving villagers an unexpectedly long way to walk. Huns, of course, not needing houses don't have to run into that problem. Another strength is a Hun AI is very eager to switch to knights as a counter to skirmishers, and will even add in cavalry archers, or sometimes fast castle into knights in opportune moments. To follow that up in Imperial, they typically go for paladins, hussars, and heavy cavalry archers, capitalizing well on their civilization's strengths. Next up at number 5, we have the Bohemians. As you'd expect, they also typically open with archers and skirmishers, continuing with crossbows or knights in castle age. It's then common for them to end up making a castle during Castle Age and collect relics, as the AI knows to prioritize a monastery and grab fervor for their villagers. Their Imperial Age is actually one of the strongest out of the AIs, where they go for elite Hussite wagons and halberdiers, or occasionally hand cannoneers depending on their opponent's units. They also reach Imperial Age about 50 seconds faster than average, typically around 36 and a half minutes. Given the AI doesn't make great use of mobility either, the Bohemians' lack of mobility doesn't hurt as much as you'd expect. In the very late game as well, they'll also add in Hufnitzas and Trash Monks, really playing the sieve to its potential. Moving on to number 4, we have the Burgundians. The AI is actually quite diligent about getting techs and age early, leading to slower advance times, but the other AI don't seem to be able to punish this. It'll typically go for a bit of a slow scout rush, and follow that afterwards with archery range units. During Castle Age, they sometimes use crossbows and elite skirmishers, but more typically make a cavalier tech switch, giving them one of the most effective Castle Ages. In Imperial, they typically go for Paladin and Hazar, making use of the cheaper upgrade costs, though occasionally they'll also use Custilier instead of Paladin, and of course are also happy to add in counter units like Hand Cannoneers. The AI will even try to quickly end the game with Flemish Revolution on occasion if it's banking a lot of resources. Entering the top three, we have the Slavs. Similar to Burgundians, the AI typically opens with scouts, and then follows it up with an archery range. The AI then likes to boom, and will often use a defensive tower early on to protect any forward resources. In Castle Age, they logically follow up with knights, or depending on the map, will happily fast castle into knights. Later, in Imperial Age, they tend to prefer the elite Boyer and Hazar, adding in elite skirmishers as a counter to any halberdiers, and will even make use of their farming bonus by selling extra food as needed at the market. Unfortunately, it doesn't really prioritize Druzhna champions, but against cavalry sieves will spam Druzhna halberdiers and boyars, which can be quite effective against an enemy halberdier and paladin combo. That said, the AI could probably be a bit better about using detonets, as it tends to pick it up quite late and spam castles in locations they really aren't needed. Moving on, at number 2 we have the Tudents. 
Again, this is a strong cavalry sieve that the AI is more likely to use in that way, though the AI is varied in its opening strategies, either going with men-at-arms or archers and skirmishers. Alternately, depending on the map, the AI will also prioritize a defensive tower and fast castle into knights. One of the secrets to their success is that spamming knights and pikes against other civilizations doing that same strategy, they tend to perform well thanks to their better armor. And of course, early towers can also be very effective against the AI. Despite being labeled an infantry sieve and of course having the Teutonic Knight, the Teutons in Imperial Age will almost always default to full paladin, which can be quite strong. Though, of course, the AI always loves to add in halberdiers and hand cannoneers as counter units. Apparently, the AI will also shamelessly use scout cavalry in Imperial Age to deal with monks or onagers without fear of ridicule of using scouts in Imperial Age. But now we come to number one, where you might expect Franks, given all the top tier cavalry civilizations being represented here, as well as their reputation online among players similar in skill to the extreme AI. The last three years have definitely primed us all to think they would be number one. But no, the AI's best civilization ended up being the Vikings, with a 72% win rate one on one. Like most civilizations, the AI prefers an archer's and skirmisher's opening, but it'll also do a man at arms rush in Feudal Age on occasion. Despite having free wheelbarrow, they surprisingly have a slower than average 21 and a half minute castle time, largely because they're so aggressive with feudal units, leading to an early advantage. They then regularly overwhelm the AI with crossbows and skirmishers, adding in a few rams to finish things off. Even if the enemy AI successfully fights off the first big wave in Castle Age, the Viking AI is unusually persistent and can follow with a successful second wave attack as the other AI is trying to boom and add in more town centers. Alternately, if certain conditions are met, Vikings can also go for a night rush, and even without bloodlines and husbandry, they regularly beat top cavalry civilizations, thanks to their strong economy. They also reach Imperial Age over a minute faster than the AI's average, at about 36 minutes typically, and prefer to follow that up with champions and research chieftains, which the other AIs seem to have an especially hard time dealing with. The main point is, if you want the ultimate extreme AI challenge, then Vikings seem like a great choice. If you're curious to check out the data yourself, there's a great little website put together summarizing the results, and even more impressive, a little write-up on how the AI typically plays each sieve, along with more cool AI stats. It was a huge project, and I'm absolutely blown away by the dedication to seeing it through. The results are very interesting though, especially for any players who primarily like to test their skills against the AI. That'll do it for this one though. Big thanks to Seb, Woodruff, John, Jockster, Justin, Kyle, James, Jean-Paul, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their awesome support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.